Hi, this is Matt from ESU, and today we are going to learn how to download a sound file into a Loke Sound 5 DCC decoder. So this process will work with any of our loadable sound files into any of our decoders. Um, so that the general process is the same. I happen to be working with a Loke Sound 5 DCC. It would also work with a Loke Sound Select or a Loke Sound 4.0, uh, 3.5. Any of them are, are essentially the same, but today it just happened to be with a, a Loke Sound 5 DCC so that's what we're going to do. Now uh, the first thing we need to do is figure out what sound file it actually is that we need and in our case what actual prime mover we need. I'm going to be installing sound into a Rapido SW1200. Now this is a non-rebuilt SW1200 so I know it's a, a 567, a 12-cylinder 567. Now some SW1200s were rebuilt so they may have a 567 with 645 power assemblies which is a recording that we we have but just do a little bit of research on your prototype and chances are we have that file so the first thing we're going to do is after we've figured out kind of what we need is to go to our website which is simply loksound.com um, or as you can see here it's also uh, esu.eu slash en slash start um, both of them go to the exact same place so um, it's easier for me just to remember loksound.com l-o-k-s-o-u-n-d.com um, so once we're on the main page we want to go to the download pages so we can find these files so I know that it's a North American file and it's a Loke Sound 5 file um, if it would happen to be a v4 North American file you'd want to come down here um, if it's a select retail file it's down here uh, some of the select um, OEM files that we worked with uh, factory equipped locomotives it could be here same with the Loke Sound 5 factory equipped it could be up here so just kind of know what you're looking for um, today we're just going to look at our general retail files and in most cases these days in North America this is the section that you want to go to so we go to Loke Sound 5 North American Australian sound files and I know that I'm putting it into an SW1200. Maybe I don't know what the prime mover is. I, I happen to, but if I don't, simply go up to the search menu. Now this is searching the projects within the Loke Sound 5 North American sound files. If I go back here and um, if I want to look in all of the projects that are available, I can use this search. And if I go back to the home page and if I use this search, I will not be able to find the sound files that I need. This search is actually to find products like decoders or switch pilots or the cab control um, so this is not where you would search for a sound file you actually want to be in the sound file page of the decoder type that you're looking for so again today we're working with a Loc sound 5 it's a North American file so I want to be in there to start then I can simply type in SW1200 once I've done that, just hit the, the search menu. And as you see, I have a couple of them here that this would work for. So three in particular. Uh, I know this is a 12-cylinder 567. So here's a 12-cylinder 567C, uh, which is what is used in a non-rebuilt SW1200. So I could use this file. I could also use a, um, if this is a rebuilt, here's a 12-cylinder 645C. So this is a 567 with rebuilt um, um, power assemblies in it. Uh, this is a 567A. It's not exactly right for this model, but as it says here, um, it sounds similar. So it would just give you another option. Say you have a couple that you want to put sound in. Chances are we have a couple very similar files that you could use just to give you a little bit of variety. Uh, one thing you want to look for, and I can see it here, so it's a good thing to talk about. You see some of these are hi-fi files and some of them are not. As we created the Loke Sound 5, we didn't have all of the files re-edited to the higher quality, so we took the Loke Sound 4 files and we uh, formatted them so that they would load into a Loke Sound 5 uh, decoder. Now, once we've gone back to the original audio and recut that audio to work in its highest quality with a Loke Sound 5, we add the Hi-Fi logo. So if you don't see this logo, chances are it's a Loke Sound 4 file that has been uh, reformatted to work with a Loc Sound 5, but the quality, while still very good, may not be quite as high as the, the Hi-Fi files of the Loc Sound 5. 
So now that we've figured that out, this is the file that we need, S0829. We want to go to the download menu, or download button, I should say, and click on S0829, Lokesound 5 DCC. On a few files, you may find a couple options here. So that's why I'm showing you this. Um, so go ahead and click it. Um, you don't need to read through the license agreement, but you probably should for legal reasons. Ha ha ha. Um, but take a look at it. Um, you know, once you've read it once, it's going to be the same from there on out. Accept that. Now, here's the tricky part that I've had some customers have a little bit of trouble with. Remember where you save this to. In most computers, in most browsers, I should say, um, it's going to save in a download area of your of your desktop, or I'm sorry, of your of your desktop computer. So um, you should have downloads, or in in Windows, in, in this case, you should have a downloads folder, and most often that's where it's downloading. Sometimes you can have some options depending on what you're what you're using. Um, I'm using Mozilla in my uh, my browser so I know if I hit save what's going to happen is I'm going to have a, a window come up here and as soon as it's done this window is going to turn um, button now window this button is going to turn blue and that's saying that it has been downloaded so once I click there it's going to show me a few things that I've downloaded recently and um, the first one I see here is s0829 I know that's the file that I want so because I have the newest version of the look sound 5 software already loaded on my computer which is a different video um, I'm just gonna simply double or just click on that um, you may need to double click depending on your browser but you want to open it and once you do it's going to open directly into the look sound software or look uh, the ESU look programmer software I should say and as you can see I'm today using look programmer 5.1.8 which happens to be the newest version available at this moment and this file is already loaded. Everything from that file is there. And before you do anything else, we want to stop and not make any changes to this file. This is really important. Um, if, we, if we start making changes, if we start changing the address and going to function mapping and changing how the buttons work and all of that, then when we do go to write the file, if there's a problem, we're not going to know what it was that caused the, the problem. So before we do any of that work, before we do any of those changes, I should say, we want to simply write the file to the decoder. And you can do this in a couple ways. The first way is just to hit this musical note with a red arrow. Uh, you could also go up to file, I'm sorry, programmer, and write decoder data and write decoder sound data. Now, now, when you hit write decoder sound data it's also going to write the data so there's really no reason to write the data first you really just want to write the sound data um, again you could do is notice the icons were the same um, you could do it from either place I typically just use this because it's convenient once I hit this button it's going to give you a couple warnings that come up I should say options more than warnings but there is a warning here that I want you to pay attention to um, as you can see here, it's giving you the option to write the decoder data, which is the CV data, along with the sound file. Um, again, in most cases, you want to do this. Uh, there are instances where you don't, but 99.9% .9 of the time, you also want to write the data. But the second option here is what I want you to pay attention to. ESU decoders have the ability to create your own defaults. So if you have a problem, um, say you've spent a half an hour setting up your speed curve and you've saved that into the decoder and you start running your locomotive and somehow or other you get a, a short or something messes up your decoder you have a problem with it and you need to reset or you've simply made a mistake on something later on uh, um, you've changed the CV that you didn't realize you've changed and something's not working right so simply just reset your decoder, right? Well, sort of. Um, if you have saved an, uh, the settings for that speed curve, you can then overwrite the current defaults of your decoder to those settings. So I've spent a half an hour changing those speed curves, and now I want to make those settings the default. So when I reset the decoder, it will go back to having all of those speed curve settings already in there. It won't. I won't have to start over again. 
Now, the other thing that happens here, say you've changed your address after the fact, and now you can't, um, you have to do a reset. Well, normal resets will set your address back to 03, but if you've already set the address to something else, and you've overwritten those defaults, when you reset the engine, it's going to go back to what you've written in there as the address. So just keep that in mind as you do this. Um, again, most of the time, I personally do overwrite the defaults because I want to make some setting changes, and I don't want to lose them. So I'll, I'll go ahead and write that. The very first time you do it, you absolutely want to overwrite the defaults because that way, when if this started off as a blank decoder and the function mapping was different, when you overwrite the defaults with this newest sound file, it's going to make the function mapping of that file, sorry, I clicked the button I shouldn't have, I just want to show you here, all of this function mapping that comes along with this file will become your new defaults if you have that box checked. So at least the first time when you download this file, especially if you're a dealer and you're going to send this out to a customer or maybe you're an installer of something like that, um, when you go to write the decoder, overwrite the defaults with those current values. That way when a reset is done, all of this function mapping will be the same. Again, if it's a blank file or a blank decoder when you receive it and you don't overwrite the defaults with the sound file settings, when you reset the decoder, it was going to go back to those uh, original blank decoder or ready for programming decoder function mapping. And you don't want to do that because um, while the sounds are still there, the function mapping isn't there to, to communicate and and tell those sounds what to do so always 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 first time you write a sound file make sure you overwrite the defaults with the current values so i'm going to go ahead and get that started and as you can see it's going to start communicating with the decoder and it's going to write the decoder data first and it's also going to look at and it did it already uh, once in a while, if it's a decoder that hasn't been written to in quite a while, it's also going to do a firmware update. The decoder, um, or I'm sorry, the software will go out and look at the decoder, and if the firmware update needs to be updated, if it's not the newest firmware on the decoder, it will do that automatically for you. So you don't necessarily have to look and see if it needs updated. And those firmware updates uh, could be a bug fix. It could be, and most often, is a new feature that we've added. Say we've added a new lighting effect or something along those lines. Uh, that's what happens during a firmware update. So, um, And depending on your computer and the size of the sound file, this process of writing the sound memory could take up to about 30 minutes minutes. Um, so when that's happening, go get yourself a cup of coffee, um, read the paper for a little bit, come back, and everything should be set. So after that, do a little testing, make sure everything works, and then once everything is working the way that it should out of the box, then you can start making changes. And again, those are other videos that we'll get to here in time. So um, check our website, loksound.com, go to the video pages. Let me get back to that real quick. I'll show you where they're at. So if you click on videos, you'll see all kinds of new videos as to how to use a low programmer, just different tech tips, what kind of speakers to use, how to hook them up, um, cab control how-tos, ecos how-tos, some sound samples, some product reviews, lots of information there. So I hope this video has helped. If you have any questions, please let us know. Uh, you can email us anytime at support at